last week the upcoming Amazon Prime series, The Lord of the Rings, unveils its cast. And I am here to talk about this because a lot of YouTubers that are out there are wondering just how are there non-white people being casted? This doesn't make sense. A lot of comments in these streams and they think Lord of the Rings is going woke. I will start by saying this. I am a huge Lord of the Rings fan. I am a huge fan of the writings of J.R.R. Tolkien. I have a lot of books here and most people don't realize that there is a complete history in this world. Of Arda, okay? People don't realize they base their opinions on three movies that they've seen. Maybe they've seen the Hobbit movies too, which weren't as good. But that's a story for another day. So they're basing their opinions on six movies. And people don't realize exactly the scope of this world that Tolkien created, and they don't realize the length of history in this world. So I'm going to go ahead and attempt to try and explain this the best I can as a non-scholarly human being that really got into Lord of the Rings when the movies came out. I had to buy everything that I could with the name Tolkien written across it. And I'm going to try and explain this to people so they are not freaking out. Now, before I do, I want to say I'm planning on watching this. I will watch this. It's Lord of the Rings. If this is woke identity politics, if I see it, I will call it out. I will absolutely call it out. If they are pushing agenda with this show, I will absolutely call it out and I will keep calling it out and I will watch it every week and you can come here and this channel will become that, okay? But I really don't think it's going to be and I'm going to explain why I think that right now. So let's get started. Firstly, I mentioned the scope and the length of this world that we have embarked on. There are people that take Kevin Smith's words of... The Lord of the Rings is nine hours of people walking, okay? If you are basing your opinion of Lord of the Rings on that, it is just silly because we Tolkien fans know that that is the most unintelligent comment ever made. To put this into perspective, he's writing this stuff 50s, 60s. Dungeons and Dragons comes out in the 70s, okay? Then the explosion happens in the 80s with fantasy, okay, sci-fi starts borrowing, everything has borrowed from this. And people need to realize specifically that the timeline of this world is so in-depth and huge. The Fellowship of the Ring, the, t the Two Towers, and the Return of the King, all those events happened in what is called the Third Age. And the Third Age itself has 3,021 years, okay? So when, in the beginning of that trilogy, when Gandalf goes to the Shire, talks to Frodo, explains to him what the ring is and why he, it must be destroyed and why it needs to be him that does so uh, to start this journey, that happened in April 12th of 3,018 and at the end of the film, when Sam returns home. That happens in October of 3021. You heard me correctly. The Third Age is 3,021 years. And that is the end of the Third Age. So, the First Age, which deals with... And this is, this is insane. Now, it should be known, too, that some of these stuff in these timelines that were written... There are events that happen, for example, uh, you know, the birth of certain characters, like the birth of Legolas, for example, is mentioned, but there are no stories around that. Okay. But the timeline itself, there are stories within these timelines. So the creation basically of the world and how it was settled is 30,000 years. The first age is almost 600 years. The second age is 3,441 years. And then, of course, the third age, which is deals with Gandalf and the ring and Gollum and all that, is 3,021 years. Now, the fourth age, unfortunately, I'm assuming Tolkien didn't get to spend a whole lot of time on it because there are no major, major events that happened as far as any battling. That's what we're talking about here. 
So to move, to get to the point of the cast that was announced and the questions that people have, there is a British scholar by the name of Tom Shippey. He is 76 years old. And he was writing and speaking, doing lectures, lecturing on Tolkien and his writings since the 70s. Okay, so this is someone that has dedicated his free time, basically, to this world. And he, as far as we know, has been working with the writers of the television show. Now, it should be said also, last week, Christopher Tolkien passed away at age 95, I believe. So rest in peace, Christopher Tolkien. He's the son of J.R.R. He was in charge of the estate. And people were worried too, oh no, now that he's now that he's passed away, Amazon is going to take all this lore and tear it up. No, it doesn't work that way because he actually, most people don't realize, I think it was two or three years ago, he actually signed off as the execu- executor to the, uh, to the estate, the Tolkien estate. So someone else is technically in charge right now. It could be his son who was also a writer. This family is just full of writers, obviously, but it's protected. It's protected, okay? Now, according to the rules, I read an article with Tom Shippey, and according to the rules, they can't, the, show, the tel- television show can't change anyone's backstories, and also they cannot, if, if anything was written by Tolkien himself about a specific type of people, or what they are capable of, or what they look like, cannot be changed. So, if that holds true, and again, we don't, we don't know for sure any of this. But if that holds true, you're not going to get, well, first of all, Gandalf is, will not be in this. You know, this isn't a remake of the movies that everyone knows. You're not going to see Aragorn turn into a, um, I don't know, a Mexican Canadian who identifies as a sword itself. You, you can't have any ridiculousness like that, according to the rules of the estate and Tom Shippey. And also, for those that don't know, the estate don't mess around. The estate don't play because they have rejected numerous things over the years as far as people writing, people borrowing, people wanting to do TV shows, people wanting to do movies and even audio. They don't mess around. If, If you put in a request to the estate for this, you have to have a sit down. This is like serious stuff, okay? So it's the, it's the complete opposite of, say, for example, George Lucas signing on the dotted line. Here's my transcripts. Here's everything I have signed away. Boom, 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 done. Okay. The exact opposite. This stuff is protected. Now, will they have wiggle room in the story? I would say, yeah, they probably do. They probably have wiggle room to maybe they will see a note. Uh, maybe a character description and a note that maybe Tolkien wrote about an individual specific character, and maybe they'll make him interact with some other character. They're allowed to do that type of stuff, you know, that wasn't originally written. So they're, they're, I'm sure we're going to see things like that. But before we get into the cast, I just want to read one more thing. And on your screen, you will see it, and it's in the thumb. This is a book I picked up after the movies were released. And I didn't know it existed at the time, and I totally skitzed. I had to have it. And it is called Tolkien's World from A to Z, The Complete Guide to Middle-Earth, From the Hobbit Through the Lord of the Rings and Beyond by Robert Foster. Now this basically, this entire book, as I flip through, is basically... Now they're, they're at the end, it's basically a glossary. And an index of everything. It's basically an encyclopedia or a dictionary, if you will. If you guys remember those things. But in the end, there are... um, In the back of the book, there are, you know, family lines and family trees. But it's almost 600 pages long. And it is basically just a dictionary. There is so much stuff in here. If you handed this to a hater, you know, going back to Kevin Smith's comments... Nine hours of people walking, huh? Was that all it was? You hand this book to them, and they would open this, and they would be like, what is this? What is all this stuff? What, 
what the hell does Belthil mean? What is what is Azog? What is oh Arwen? I know that name. You know, I'm just flipping through right now. But they would they would lose their minds because anybody that's into world building or lore building, this is the book for them. This is history right here, fictional history. It's unbelievable what this guy did. If you're a Lord of the Rings fan, I highly suggest picking this up. Maybe you don't have it. I think it's like twelve bucks right now on Amazon. But yeah, I would suggest. It's a, it's a good little companion read. If you're reading some stories and you come across something that doesn't sound familiar, you could look it up and it's right here. And there's also things in here that that you would not really know because it's in those writings that weren't, you know, that are only released in complete guides like this or the Lost Tales. I have a Lost Tales book too where there are some shorter stories, um, some unfinished stories. So there's all kinds of things that that Christopher went through. God bless him. Christopher went through all those notes and all those starts and stops and he tried to put it all together and make sense of it and released a bunch of stuff a few years ago. Well, not a few years ago. I'm dating myself, but uh, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. But yeah, if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, pick this up. But let's get back to the TV series. There are a people in this book and this is just one example, called the Easterlings, okay? I'm not going to, now this is going to sound like complete gibberish, and it's going to sound like another language, because it is, because, oh, by the way, he wrote, <laughs> as a linguist, all these races have their own languages, and okay, so I'm going to try and get through this, but I'm not going to give you the specifics, just in case these people are Easterlings, these characters on the TV show. I don't want to really give anything away, but this is what it says under Easterlings. Tribes of men who entered into Beleriand after Dagor Progolok, some at the instigation of Morgoth and some out of desire for the rich lands of Beleriand. Beleriand is, uh, I'll say, e elvish territory. Okay, some elvish lands. Many of them entered the service of the house of Fionor and... That has to do with, uh, I, I just said I'm not going to explain everything. I'm not, I'm just going to read it. Uh, let me start over. Many of them entered the service of the house of Fionor and played a crucial part in the Nirnaeth Arnoadiad. I hope I'm saying that right. It's tough. It's tough. The sons of Bor remained faithful to Madros in that battle, but the sons of Ulfang betrayed Carinthir and caused the collapse of the eastern army of the elves. After the battle, the Easterlings, who served Morgoth, were shut away in Hithlum, where they married some of the surviving women of the Edain and enslaved the rest of the Edain and elves. They perished in the great battle. Here comes the woke question. The Easterlings were short and broad. They were dark of skin, eye, and hair. Their culture was rather primitive also called the swarthy men. And the word swarthy simply means, you know, dark. So I always pictured these people similar to the Dothraki in the primitive sense, I guess you could say. But of course it says short and broad. So I never pictured them like, uh, you know, six foot tall beasts like the Dothraki were on Game of Thrones. But I think it's a similar thing. Dark skin, dark eyes, dark hair and a primitive type of tribe, maybe, if you would, a people. So I'll say this, not to spoil anything, but it said they perished in the great battle. And I believe the great battle, do not quote me on this. I know someone's listening that knows everything about Lord of the Rings and they're going to destroy me in the comments, but that's okay. For pronunciations and history and anything, you can, you can attack me, go ahead. I'd probably deserve it because it's been a while since I read all this stuff, but... I believe they perished in the great battle. I believe the great battle ended in the first age. And we are told that the TV show is going to deal with the second age. Now, I believe the Easterlings, once they had that battle, I think they, I think they did spread out, okay, throughout the land. I'm not sure, but I think they did. And of course it said, you know, they enslaved some of the elves and, and they married some of the surviving women. So, 
if you are wondering, is this going woke? Are they going to mess with the characters? The answer is no. Using the Easterlings as an example, some of the people that were casted could simply be Easterlings or derived from Easterlings, maybe a few generations down. And I said earlier, the show is dealing with the Second Age, 3,400 years. There are a lot of things that were written in the Second Age. The end of it is, if you remember the original Lord of the Rings movies, when the Fellowship of the Ring opens up, they're showing Sauron. Uh, they're showing that original ring fight. They're showing a, a sealed door. They're showing they're showing the elves and the men. Like they can deal with that or they can go back way before that. And there's a lot of cool stuff. Actually, this, what happens with the Easterlings is a pretty cool story. But like I said, it's in the first age. So what are they going to do? Uh, I don't I don't know how they're going to wiggle that around. Maybe they'll start there. Who knows? Maybe they'll start at the end of the first age. But I'll tell you what, if this show kicks uh, catches on, people really like this show. I think they could be watching this show for a very, very, very long time because there is plenty of space in that time period that some written, some not written, some notes, some complete create creations from the writing staff that'll be on the show. Now, does that worry me? Yes, but not from a woke standpoint. To me, I'm just worried because I'm so into this that they may start messing around with things too much. And let's hope that Tom Shippey is there to guide them in a proper way. But to answer the woke questions, I don't think so. I just, I just wanted to put it out there. If you've seen a YouTuber other than myself talk about this show that are worried about it, please let them know. Take this link to this show and send it to them. Put it down in one of their comments on the, sh- on the uh, video that you've seen. And who knows, maybe they'll come listen to it and realize, oh, okay, that's how they can do it. Okay, just, just asking, you know, just asking. And I understand that. Because in this day and age, people are worried about certain IPs. You know, we've seen it before and we've seen it again. There are things getting changed left and right. From a canon standpoint, people are very angry. And thankfully, Tom Shippey, I think, is there to guide the ship. Now, the only specific things I want to say about the cast, because I don't know. I don't know a lot of them. And I think that's a good thing. I like that we are dealing with relative unknowns. Somebody out there that's listening might throw a comment, oh, how do you not know this? The only two people I know are the Game of Thrones alumni, which is Joseph Molly, who played uh, Uncle Benjen, and you have Robert Arameo, who played uh, young Ned Stark. So I'll tell you this, the uh, the women, I think you can tell who, who will be an elf on this show. I mean, if you look at some of these people, you can see them. You could see them as elves. You could see certain people as just men, you know, so we'll see. We'll see what happens, but I'm very excited to to get some more news on this show and finally watch it. I know it just started. Well, I don't even know if they actually started filming, but they're about to. So let's hope for good. Let's hope for let's hope for a good show to continue some of these stories, expose us to stories that we don't know. You know? I don't think one of these women <laughs> one of these darker skinned women is going to be uh, Gandalf's mom. No, that that's not going to happen. We are dealing with something completely different. So no, no worries there. But we'll see. We'll see what they do. And I think we should, uh, you know, those people that are out of control with it, that are very nervous about it, just, I think, calm down. You know, calm down. They just announced the cast. They didn't even hit record yet on anything as far as we know. You know, no, there was no first scene directed by anyone. So let's just calm down for a little bit and uh, let's see, give it a chance and see what they do. And like I said in the open, if it is complete trash and listen, I'm not even going to have to. If I see it, I'm going to know it's complete trash. It's going to really bother me. And then I'm going to come on every week on YouTube and I'm going to do a scathing review of the episodes. And and that'll be that. <laughs> so trust me trust me something like this this is mine so they better watch it they better watch themselves that's all that's all but for now 
Let's enjoy the fact that we have some new Lord of the Rings coming. If you like this video, hit like. If you like this channel, take a look at what I got. If it interests you, please consider subscribing. And thanks for listening. I will see you next time. Blading for Truth.